Hi, I'm Maria O'Toole and I'm a nurse tutor in St Vincent University Hospital and I was recently redeployed to the intensive care unit um, for the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, I want to be part of the fight against the COVID-19 and to use my skills um, as much as possible to help. The things that you go through with patients, with staff, a lot of the stuff never leaves you and you see things and experience things that that really stay with you and they change your perspective on life. I mean, if you're having a bad day or a bad time of your life and you go and look after someone who's really struggling, it really changes your perspective on everything and you just, I suppose it makes you very grateful for what you do have and I love that it, um, it's a job that I feel, um, I feel it works with my values. Do you know what I mean? I feel it works with what I feel is important in life and I love that, I love that about it. Yeah. yeah, so in our house, um, there's myself, there is my husband Peter, he's a nurse, um, he's also a healthcare professional on the front line of the COVID-19 and I've, we have our two sons, uh, James who's five and Kieran who's three and our cat Zuby. Yeah, when I first heard of COVID-19, um, I suppose I began to feel um, like I need to prepare somehow. Um, I suppose that's always kind of been the way I cope with anything. If there's any kind of, maybe it's the intensive care nurse in me, I don't know, where I need to prepare, okay, so if this does come, what am I going to do? I do get very logical and planning ahead. So, and I tend to generally prepare for the worst and then hope for the best. So at the moment, we're very lucky that we've been able to work opposite shifts. So we haven't needed any childcare, which has been really, we've been very lucky with that really. So I suppose we had to make a plan. We have two small children. Um, that if we became infected we, it would be most likely that we would both become infected and we would need someone to take care of the kids um, and I suppose trying to wait up because obviously Peter's family most of them are healthcare professionals as well and same with my own family so trying to get someone who would actually be free and trying to make that plan um, so we had settled on my sister who would come over and, and, and help out with the kids um, depending on how sick we would get now thank god we haven't um, we haven't become sick um, and but I would still have those plans in place just in case we try and mind each other a little bit because we are both we have been running on adrenaline for the last few weeks so we do have to mind each other a little bit and we are conscious of making sure each other are okay and I think that really helps that we're both nurses that we understand you know just why you're tired or what you've been through or what you've been seeing and that, that definitely makes it easier so the PPE is either a long sleeved gown or the hazmat suit. Um, I'm putting on a surgical um, hairnet, I'm putting on a mask, checking for the seal, putting on goggles and if there is a patient that doesn't, um, if there's a lot of um, aerosol generating procedures um, with a specific patient I'm looking after, I'll also wear a visor. So I'm fairly well covered up going in. So in one shift you generally would change your PPE about three or four times it's not the most comfortable to wear um, because it is quite restrictive on your face and also it really does kind of occlude your vision a little bit. So you find yourself if you're looking at the, you know, you're trying to um, look at the ECG rhythm, you know, you are having to look a little bit longer. Um, even the sounds are kind of distorted a bit with all the, the headgear. Um, and after a while, if you're wearing it for a couple of hours, you do start to sweat and you are breathing in your own, you know, your carbon dioxide. Um, so by the time your break is coming up, you really want to take it off. You, you do get a little bit agitated with it on, but at the same time, I'm really grateful to have it on and to be able to protect myself and the patients as well. Um, so we've set up a Skype um, service so that the family can see the patients. Usually we would have much more time with the family in terms of preparing them to see the patient um, with all the tubes and all the equipment and the monitors. Um, so it is a bit alarming for them, um, but at the same time, I'm so glad we have Skype because it has been really nice to witness the family and if the patient's a bit more awake and they're able to talk or communicate, it's been really lovely and you can just see the relief of the family to be able to see the patient and, you know, willing them on and there's a really lovely love about it. Like it's just, it's really heartening to see that as well, um, but you'd really feel for the families because it's tough. It's really tough not being able to visit. Um, at this time. I think actually what I really enjoy is the teamwork. I think there's been really good, um, really good morale despite all the stress and staff are very stressed at the moment but there has been a really good feeling of a team effort, everyone working together, everyone looking out for each other 
And then the other side of it, I've actually loved working with the patients, with the, you know, listening and talking to the family um, and just being part of it as much as possible. And we've had some really good cases that's really lifted morale in the unit. And I'm so grateful actually that the patients have all received as much care as they could um, in the ICU and we haven't received that surge because that's been an underlying stress for all of the staff working um, on the front line is that that potential surge that could come and you know that patients will suffer if that happens um, so I'm really grateful that that it's worked so well for us at the moment yeah I can truly understand people being frustrated you know I really can it's hard being restricted not being able to do your normal things and not being able to make plans that can be very difficult and I think if you're sitting in your own little box, in your own little area, and you're not seeing any, you know, any patients hooked up to your ventilator or your dialysis and all the infusions running in, you, when you're not seeing that, it's not really real. And you can't, and it's really just numbers on a page that's coming out every evening, unless it's directly affecting you. Um, so I can understand the frustration, um, but I hope that people feel that I suppose they've contributed because they really have as a group and I'm so I'm really amazed actually at the community effort and the level of solidarity in general um, that the public have been so supportive of trying to flatten the curve and keeping within their own dis you know their own um, spaces and it's made such a difference and I think perspective I think for most people I think they realize probably what's important to them and also I suppose even the luxury of freedom that you take for granted all the time that you can go and you know go to Glendalough or go up to Sugarloaf or you know those things you take for granted um, that you can go and plan a trip over to France um, things like that um, and family and friends and connection is so important um, and I think that probably people are realizing probably what's most important I hope they are I hope they are